Today, our Milky Way galaxy is some 10 billion years old. It's mature, middle-aged, poised between the great eras of star birth and star death. But how will it change in the coming eons as it continues its journey through time and space? At the University of Michigan, physics professor Fred Adams is making a science of the future following the laws of physics to the end of the line. By understanding astrophysical systems like planets and stars and galaxies in the universe like we do today, we can project into the future and actually see what will happen. This science of the future is being launched with a series of brand new tools on display at an international supercomputing convention in Denver. Supercomputers and cutting-edge inventions in optics and software. These tools promise unprecedented insights into the fate of our galaxy. Already, they are helping scientists answer basic questions. How will this era of the stars play out? And what lies beyond? For researchers like Paul Woodward, the first landmark will be the fate of stars like the Sun. You can think about you know, the Sun's evolution as a fight against gravity. Gravity is what holds the Sun together. It's constantly pulling the material of the Sun inward. But the Sun doesn't all just fall in because it's burning hydrogen in its center, in its core. That energy generates pressure that holds the sun up against gravity. But when that hydrogen runs out, the sun will partially collapse, and its core will begin to heat up, reaching temperatures of 100 million degrees. That spells the beginning of the end. Earth would start getting hotter and hotter. The oceans would come to a slow rolling boil and they begin to evaporate. For humans and other creatures still alive on planet Earth, things will begin to get intolerable. The only question is when. You know, they say that if you have a frog and it's in water and you just gradually raise the water temperature, the frog won't jump out and it will just cook. Uh, who knows? Maybe the same will happen to us the sun's temperature gradually increases and we never find any particular moment when we should leave, essentially jump off this planet and then we just cook. It could happen. Just a tiny rise in temperature to a mere 140 degrees would cause all water to evaporate and turn the earth into a desert. We will be cooking then. This is a scary time. What we'd have to be doing by then is looking at some of the outer planets. Those places that we know today are a little too cold to live on, well, maybe they'll become just right. Let's put our sights on those planets and start pitching tent to give us a place to live the day that happens. Clearly, we'll have to find a way to save ourselves or our planet. We may have no choice but to turn to Fred Adams' plan. The most obvious one is simply to build space stations and move into space because we're already building space stations so by billions of years from now that might become technologically feasible. The other interesting possibility would be to actually try to engineer the solar system and move the planets around. You can in principle do that by steering asteroids or other large bodies into the proper orbits so that they gravitationally scatter off of the planets and move them around in the process. Adams has actually worked out the trajectories necessary to tug the Earth away from the Sun. An asteroid nudged into position would exert enough gravitational force to gradually move our planet to safety. The need for such extraordinary measures may arise sooner than we think. Some speculate that the Earth has in fact already gone through 90% of its habitable lifespan. 
But there is an even more dangerous phase ahead.